black and indigenous people. Um, and I think that's a lot of where that comes from. So you, know, you arrive in Canada and when you learn the ways of what it means to be Canadian, whiteness is, is the ultimate goal. And there's kind of maybe an unspoken or unconscious hope of being closer to whiteness. And I think that's where like the model minority myth, for example, comes from. Those minorities, those immigrants who come to Canada and are seen as more, uh, as like the good immigrants because they, because communities, because the communities have in some ways, you know, portrayed elements that black and indigenous communities will never be viewed as. And I think that's where a lot of that anti-blackness comes from is, yeah, is a desire to be, to distance yourself from blackness, to distance yourself from indigeneity because that makes you closer to whiteness. And I think, I think that also presents trauma in itself. The, the, I think the word trauma was mentioned there, that kind of, yeah, trauma of being racialized, but also desiring whiteness. And it's such a complicated um, and complex thing because whiteness, you know, whiteness is invisible because it's, it's the norm. Like, as you said, people of color are, have a color and white people are never considered that way. And I think that's a huge part of how, yeah, of how anti-blackness kind of manifests itself. So, so I guess I, I should try to tackle that, that first one. Um, what I would say to somebody who's thinking of moving to um, Vancouver, um, if they're black, is don't. Um, or, or, or rather, don't unless you're ready to do some real work. Because a part of why I would say that is it's hard to think of a place where there is no there there. And that is blackness in Vancouver. This is really hard. Many other cities, there is a black place. What the theorists call it an ethnoburb, right? You can go somewhere and say this is where most of these people are. I had a colleague visiting from Brazil who's trying to do some work around blackness um, at a university in Australia where she's teaching. And she, tell, she asked me, so where do I go? Where's the, you know, where are the black neighborhoods? <laughs> there, there, there are no black neighborhoods, right? So the low numbers and the actual, what I mentioned before, the erasure of blackness, including actual erasure of a black neighborhood, Black Strathcona, has resulted in a present where we, we, are, we can gather here and there, and that's the work. What, what Sadie mentioned, go find a basketball court, go do that. There, there is no there to go to. And it, to me, it's an amazing thing to think about identity without place. It, it, it's, it's really jolting, because we take place for granted. So, if that person wants to come, be ready to be black without black neighborhoods, or be ready to participate in blackness differently. And you mentioned it, be ready to go online. We all, almost all of us, belong to Meanwhile Black in Vancouver. And this very question has been posed there. I'm coming to Vancouver. I'm engaged to this guy, and he's from Vancouver. And people say, what guy? <laughs> you know, why are you moving from the States here, right? But yeah, uh, uh, and some of the strongest activists have moved here because of those reasons, right? But that's what it means to, to do blackness here. It, it means pulling away. It means thinking of home. It means doing it otherwisely. It means going online to be black for a while, and then you shut your computer and there is no black to be seen, right? It means recognizing little, little pockets where some people have started to come in. It means knowing a history. I mean, they say black people were the first to settle Salt Spring Island. I went to Salt Spring Island and I asked people casually, so do you know where the black folks are? There were black folks here? <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, it has been erased. I went to the cemetery, and all you can see are names. Who's black there? I don't know, right? 
So that history has not been preserved, right? So anybody who wants to come here needs to be ready to roll up their sleeves and work on making community. Uh, Anika, uh, and Anika uh, Gibson, who started Meanwhile Black in Vancouver, who my other hat is, I serve on the mayor of Vancouver's Black History Month advisory. And I, when we were talking about the theme of belonging in Vancouver as black people, I immediately said, we have to have her. And out of all the stuff she talked about when she gave her speech, she said, and people need to come out more. Can we come out more and meet each other? Right? So even the person who created Meanwhile Black in Vancouver is saying, we need more chances for us to actually interact. Right? You go to places like Toronto. I remember the first anti-black racism conference in Toronto. I looked at this huge hall. It's so taken for granted. You know, like maybe a thousand black people. I'm like, wow, you don't have that. Yeah, and you don't nod to people on the subway in Toronto because there are a lot of black people and they wonder what's wrong with you. <laughs> but you do nod here. The nod means something here, right? The black nod means something here because there's so few of us. So one, don't come. That's the easiest answer. Two, come and be ready to roll up your sleeves and help make community. Um, and my answer is already answered by, by everybody here for both of the questions. And so uh, I would like to thank everyone here. Shelby, thank you for coming all the way to share your story. Um, and thank you as well very much to Sadi, Dani, Sicily, and um, Handel for all your wisdoms and your insight that you provided. <laughs> for anyone who is a UBC student and identify a black, as black or staff or faculty, there, are, um, there is a black caucus you can join. There is also the BIPOC or EBPOC, I think it's called now, uh, IBPOC, Indigenous Black Person of Color Staff and Faculty Caucus that you can join. If you want to do something outside, if you are a black woman, there is the uh, National Congress for Black Women that are doing a lot of amazing stuff. So there are a variety of spaces where you can find kin folks and skin folks. Um, with that said, I hope this is going to be a series and have more beautiful young faces like you and you know, still call you a student, but I, you know. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Um, black yeah, black, black and beautiful. Um, and also thank you very much to yourself for coming all the way here. Um, and a round of applause for you and also for the Equity and Inclusion Office for this event. Um, I believe now it's soul food time. Yeah.